Okay, I have done it. I have started The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan. After decades, decades of avoiding it, it seems to follow the classic hero's journey. And I realized, you know what? There's a specific point in this kind of story where I really get hooked. And I'm kind of wondering if it's when other people get hooked too. Hey, this is The Sword and the Pen Reflections. It is my casual alternative to the formal channel, The Sword and the Pen, link up there. So just like I did with Shadow and Bone, I am going to be reading The Wheel of Time, the first book, and comparing it to the first season of the Amazon Prime show. And then when the second season comes out, I should be all the way caught up and I'll have hopefully read the second and third book, which is what I have heard the second season is based on. And I'm just gonna do what I did with Shadow and Bone, you know, compare the two, what storytelling was done better or worse in the show or the book. Although I, I have a strong suspicion I know where the better writing is going to be. But this story starts out uh, just like the hero's journey, the classic Joseph Campbell hero's journey. We have Rand, a small town boy. He's a shepherd in a small town. As I said, small town. Oh my gosh, I'm getting repetitive. <laughs> and uh, I realized that, you know, I wasn't hooked on this story until Moraine approached the boys and started talking to them. And I'm wondering what point did you guys get hooked on this story? And because I've been thinking about why was it this point? Why wasn't it earlier? Because that happens at the end of chapter two and there's a prologue. There's a pro, there's like a prologue and a mini sort of prologue. It's like a prologue within a prologue. And then there's chapter one where we're introduced to our main character. And then there's chapter two where we're introduced to the town that he lives in. And it's not until the end of that chapter where what I'm talking about happens, the moment that I was the most interested in like, okay, I wanna know what happens next. And suddenly the turning the pages, although in this case, I'm listening on audiobook because my sister has the eye of the world at her house, uh, the, the hard copy book. It was after that point that it wasn't something I had to force myself through. I wasn't rewinding to like, oh, I spaced out during that part. Like I'm, I'm actually focused and listening now. I'm like, oh, I want to know what happens. So the, the prologue is um, it's something that happened way in the past and it's, uh, it, it's, it's mysterious what's going on. You're, you're, you're seeing a character who you don't know who he is or what's going on in his life. His family is dead on the floor around him and then this other guy shows up. You can see that the main character suddenly realizes his family is dead and then kind of goes nuts and then kills himself, I think. And then it's the end of the world. And then we get this prophecy about how these two guys are gonna come back someday. And I wasn't interested in that at all. And it's pretty obvious why. I didn't understand the context. I'm sure that I'll get to the end of this book, maybe even the whole series and go, dang, that was a really great prologue. But just reading it with no information, no prior knowledge, it was extremely boring. I had to listen to it at least twice, I think possibly even a third time, because I wasn't sure if there was something I was missing. I was like, nope, I'm not missing anything. I just have no interest in what's happening. Then we get to the second chapter and I'm like, okay, now we have the obvious hero's journey. We've got Rand, he's a shepherd, he's with his dad and they're going through the woods. Um, they're on their way to town and Rand sees a dark figure on a horse in the woods and his cloak is not moving in the wind and which is a spooky image and that did not hook me and I think it's because I knew that this was fantasy it was pretty obvious I mean we all know that this is fantasy and I was like okay this is a fantastical element and even though Rand's father was unable to see this thing like Rand sees it and then like you know hey dad look at that and it's gone I was like, okay, we expect fantastical things to happen, but I still don't know who Rand is and I don't know how magical this world is that they live in. So I don't know how fantastical this was, except that it disturbed our MC. He, he felt like this guy wanted to kill him or hated him at least. So chapter one, he go at the, let's see, at the end of it, he gets to town and he finds out that his friend Matt has also seen this cloaked figure. So he's like, okay, it wasn't in my imagination. Somebody else has seen it too. So that was a little bit creepy, but I'm still kind of not really interested. And I'm like, why, why am I not interested at this point? And again, I think it's because I don't have any context. I don't really care about Rand yet. At this point, seeing something fantastical and knowing that it wants to kill 
the MC isn't enough because I don't care about the MC. I'm like, well, who cares if he dies, right? At this point, he's just some guy in the woods. It wasn't until after we're in the town and I, I was a little overwhelmed by all this, the, the, uh, this information we were getting. So he, the narrator tells us about the history of the festival and the traditions and you get introduced to different parts of the town and the layout and the characters. And for me, it was a lot of information that to me wasn't particularly important. The most interesting thing to come out of that chapter for me was that I suspected that Rand had a crush on this other gal who I can't believe her name escapes me right now because she's, she's one of the, she's also kind of a main character. And that was the only thing that sort of stood out to me because suddenly I realized, okay, we have a character who wants something, right? And I was a little interested to see where this whole, okay, only these two kids have seen this thing. But still, it wasn't, it wasn't super interesting. Then we get to this, um, so that was, yeah, the end of the first chapter and then most of the second one. Then we had a raven. And this was more interesting because we've got Rand and his friend Matt and um, they notice that this raven is watching them, like very intensely watching them. And I'm like, that's a bit creepy. But I don't think that that would have been enough for me to be hooked. It wasn't until Moraine came in. And this is my theory of why I was so hooked on this moment. So Moraine is clearly a woman from out of town. She's dressed very elegantly. And she approaches the boys and starts talking to them. And I knew that there was something about this lady. They talked about her and how she was a stranger and she had this guy with her who seemed to be like a bodyguard or they weren't really sure what he was. And she just seemed like she knew a lot about the rest of the world. But the way she was talking to the boys was she was interested in them and she wasn't, she wasn't something lofty, like unattainable. She was personable. And for me, that was an unexpected thing. Um, and so I instantly wanted to know more about her and why was she interested in these boys? And then she gave them a coin. She gave each of the, there were three boys at this point now, a coin. And two of them, Rand and his friend Matt, decided not to spend theirs. Like for some reason, they felt like this was not a coin, despite it being worth a lot, not to be spent. And then the third friend was like, oh, I don't know. Like, I guess maybe I won't spend it. But you kind of were thinking maybe he would. So... Why was I not interested until this moment? Now, I love the hero's journey story. I've actually decided to do a formal video on the hero's journey while thinking about this concept alone. But why was it this particular moment? And I think it's because going into the hero's journey, especially in a fantasy, we know that the adventure is going to be fantastical. There's a big wide world out there, right? And we want that. We want to see all of that from the perspective of our small town boy who has no prior knowledge of the world outside. And it wasn't until Moraine interacted with them that I felt like we had a promise that he is going to get that information or that the adventure is here and it is interacting with you directly. Even the raven and the seeing the dark cloaked figure with a coat that doesn't move in the wind, that wasn't a direct contact. That was just something that he saw. But there was an exchange of information between Moraine and the boys. There was an exchange of even a coin. And that to me was a direct interaction. He, by taking that coin, involved himself in some way in the outer world. So from that point forward, I it was no effort at all for me to be interested in what happens to this character. So I'm wondering for you, when was it in this story that you felt the most hooked? And as I was saying, thinking to myself, okay, I'm going to ask the audience this. What are some other stories, hero's journey stories that I have read and where did I get really hooked? And I was thinking, okay, like, uh, let's see. The Book of Three by uh, Lloyd Alexander, who wrote The Chronicles of Pre-Dane. Those of you who have seen the Disney movie, The Black Cauldron, the Black Cauldron was based very loosely on the beginning of the first book and the end of the third book. And there's five books in this series. And it's a really great series. But um, the first book, I was trying to think, it's almost exactly the same situation. You have a boy in a tiny little, not even a village. It's like, <laughs> it's like a, 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 just a house, like a farm in the middle of nowhere, right? And, um, and when does it get interesting there? It wasn't interesting for me 
until he saw the horned king. So in the book, he works on this farm and there's Dalbin, who is like 300 and something years old. And then there's Cole, who is a, uh, a blacksmith. And they take care of this pig and the pig can tell the future. And that's a fantastical thing. And the old guy who, uh, you know, Dalbin, he's very wise and, you know, he spends a lot of his time in meditation and he has this book called the Book of Three and, and Taran goes to touch the Book of Three while Dalbin isn't looking and it feels like it, it bites him or like it stings him. So he doesn't even get to touch it. But he wants to know more about the world and he is, he's so close to it. You know, here's a pig that can tell the future using these, um, these, these sticks like that help you to deter, she'll point to little symbols on the sticks. And none of that hooked me. What hooked me was when the pig ran away into the woods and Taran's running after it. And after he's lost track of the pig, he comes across the horned king and the horned king almost tramples over him. And he's this gigantic rider with a skull for a face and giant deer's antlers. And it's, it's, it was a, a horrific image. And I was afraid for Taran's life and he actually passes out. And, um, and, and that to me was his first interaction with something fantastical because the pig never told the future for Taran. And the book, yes, the book stung him. That was interesting to me, but he didn't get to see what was in the book. I guess I should have been more interested at that point, but I wasn't because it was sort of like, no, you can't interact with this. It was almost like you're not allowed to be part of that. And so I was like, okay, boring. But once he got to the Horned King, very interesting there. And then even more interesting when he wakes up from passing out and the person who's taking care of him is, uh, seems kind of like, imagine Aragorn, but he actually is very much like Aragorn. Um, he is the, the high prince. He's the high king's son. And, um, and they go on this adventure together. And so I think it's at the moment where we have an interaction with somebody who has information or something that promises information that is much grander to the world that really hooks me and makes me want to know more. Um, let's see, then we have the Dark Water Legacy. There it is, The Ember Blade by Chris Wooding. Um, and then there's a second book called uh, The Shadow Casket, both great. The Ember Blade is, it, it feels just like this. It's a, a hero's journey story, small town kids go on a big adventure to save the world essentially. And, or they get taken out of, of their small village. The thing that hooked me in this was when his dad seemed to lose his mind. And I'm not going to give away any spoilers because I think a lot of people haven't maybe read this and might want to, but um, it's a normal country life until suddenly his dad comes home from battle and has a almost psychotic episode with his son. And that to me was, it was the introduction of the, the, the horrors of the outside world coming to meet our hero, Aaron or Aaron. Um, so there was that. And then in uh, The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, um, I am very bored by the intro. I mean, on reread, I love it. I love the beginning of this story. After having read the whole thing, I go back and I'm like, oh, I love the, you know, him being in the inn. Um, our main character is living with the Edema Rue. He grows, he's, a, it's kind of like a gypsy people. And, uh, and to me, the first read, I wasn't truly, truly hooked until we were introduced to magic. So he's just as a kid going about his day, hanging out with the other Edema Rue, and, you know, they're traveling around, but suddenly they pick up a guy who can do magic. And our main character's like, I want to do that. And becomes his friend and they travel together. You know, the guy travels with the gypsy clan together, the Adimaru clan together, and he asks to be taught how to do this. I was hooked at that moment because it was the evidence of the big story, the, the magic system of this world was gonna be introduced to our main character. And that's what I wanted. It was like a mystery. I want to solve this. I want to know more about what this character knows. And we've had some interaction now. So I was hooked there at that point. You know, there's all kinds of stories that follow the hero's journey. And I'm realizing more and more that it is this particular moment that grabs me. It is the introduction 
the introduction of interaction with the outer world and a promise that there is more information out there for you and you can get it through this person or through this action or you know whatever this um maybe it's a magical item that comes in uh so yeah that that for me is my moment so what is your moment uh, let me know about it in the comments and if you want to come on this journey with me reading the wheel of time like i said i am on chapter nine ish nine or ten ish in uh, the first book the eye of the world and I'm going to start uploading videos where I compare the novel to the show that is episode by episode for season one next week and uh, yeah let's do this <laughs> so uh, please like subscribe hit the bell for notifications and uh, if you're feeling really generous check out my patreon or my Kofi. and that's it be good to yourself